before I get into teaching you full of blues, uh, let's check the tuning of our guitars. This is an E. A. The E. G. B. And E. The tune is itself is in the key of E, but as I mentioned before, Merle Travis has a very unusual way to play the chords with the left hand, of course. Instead of using three fingers for an E, you have to be able to use only two, which means that the second finger will press on two strings, on B and E together, I mean on A and D strings. This must uh, sound very new to you, but uh, if you want to achieve the Merle Travis style, this is something you can't avoid. Also, another chord very interesting in the style of Merle is the B9 and the way he plays it. Usually you would play it like this. Maybe push with this finger on two strings also. But Merle's is playing it like this with the thumb above on two strings. And that allows the other fingers to move while you keep up the bass. Because the rhythm of left hand is as much important as the rhythm with right hand. Okay? Also a very unusual chord is another chord of E. It's an E9. And it's done like this, like a... And with a thumb on top, on two strings. In fact, if you play the fifth string, it's an E9 with a six. Like an E13 something. And that's what we have in Merle's tune, Full of Blues. Also, something that comes from the position of E, every time you will play a... What's re what replaces a bar, like the A chord bar, of course you will play at the bass with the thumb, but this finger, the third finger, will press on two strings just to be able to get that string playable, the fifth string. Usually we do that. If you play folk music, you're used to that chord, the F chord, or A, or G, or whatever, but you always leave that fifth string open are blocked with an, a cross on the diagrams, if you know what I mean. So this time, you'll be able to play it, and that's very important in the style of Merle, because this will allow you to, to play all the strings in the bass, and instead of having a very thin bass, like... I always see the students playing like that, you should play... And that's a very important part of the style of Merle Travis because this gives the groove to your playing and that makes the big difference so we'll be playing and then come the E9 also another position for the B7 not 9 it's thumb here on the top and then two fingers And then coming back to E. I think we got everything there. And if not, we'll check while we work on the split screen now.
while I was playing on this split screen, I just thought about things I forgot to tell you. Some other chords, E chords, like this one, E7, that I'm sure you know already. But this one at the end is very interesting. It's an E6-9. That's the chord that Merle Travis often uses at the end of the tune, but also it can be played finger style like. And also you can replace it by this chord with the thumb on three strings. It's the same chord. Little bar with the third finger, this one on the third string, first fret. And you have to train this because it's a good exercise for your thumb around the neck. Okay, and also about the right hand, the intro must be played really hard. Uh, I mean, you have to push on the strings, like... Don't be afraid to hit the three strings with the thumb and the three strings with the index back, like... And also, this is the way Merle would play it, not in front of the camera, of course. Um, also, the thumb can be used for the melody. That means on the, when you play the bass, like, you can hit the strings of the melody. That's why Merle can afford playing with two fingers only, because the index is not playing all the notes of the melody, like... like this and that's another secret of Merle's or Merle Travis playing and now we're gonna start learning uh, the next tune which is Cane Break Blues <laughs> 